All right, so I've got my layers set up. I've got my reference in the corner. What's beautiful about digital painting, doesn't matter the quality of resolution of your reference because we're gonna make all our own pixels. We're just referencing this. I created a layer on the top after locking the other two where I'm going to do a speed sketch. So for that, I'm gonna zoom in. And what I like is to set up my desktop with what's called the navigator. This is part of the, of the standard workspace, essentials default workspace. But if you don't see the navigator, you can just find it under window and turn it on. It has a few benefits for digital painting. One, it makes it really easy to move around the space without having to ch choose a different tool or to even scroll. The other, it makes it easy to zoom in and out. And maybe the most important is it helps you see the whole of your painting even when you're up close doing details because it's very easy to get lost in details. The next thing we're gonna do is we're going to make a brush. So this is what we're gonna do. Instead of just using the standard brush and going through all these different options, we want one that is pressure sensitive, but we don't want it to be so boring, right? So we don't want it to just be like that because that doesn't look like what painting looks like even if you were doing Sumi ink painting, you want a little bit more customization. And you can download so many different types of brushes. You know, I have a ton, dry media brushes, wet media brushes. I like this charcoal pencil one, you know, but ultimately it's up to you. And I'm gonna show you how to make your own brush because when it comes down to it, whether you're trying to match watercolor or whether you're trying to match oil or whether you're just trying to come up with your own unique way of working. Brushes are incredibly simple things in Photoshop. What they are is a shape that you put settings on, right? So, they are not hard to make. You don't need to rely on other people to make them for you. Instead, what I want you to do is make your defaults just black and white for a second. And what you're going to do is with whatever brush you want, I'm just gonna use the, the standard. I want you to make kind of a crazy messy little cloud of marks. Not perfectly symmetrical, so not a perfect circle, but also not terribly uh, elongated because I don't like using flat brushes. They're not as versatile as, as rounds. So you might have some dashes in there. You might have some little marks. I'm really using the pressure sensitivity with just the most basic brush in Photoshop of my tablet to make it light and dark. But notice it's all 100% black. That's important when you're designing a brush because you're really just making a, a black cutout shape. Notice it is not very big, right? It really shouldn't be that much bigger than maybe 700 pixels at, at most a thousand pixels, okay? Then what I want you to do is use your rectangular marquee and then copy it. Hit Command C or say Edit Copy. Then I want you to say File New. I said file new and Photoshop's doing nothing. There we go. It's taking a little while. And your first object, this is a nice little lesson shortcut in Photoshop. In Photoshop, when you copy something to the clipboard, like I just copied that little brush painting, it's gonna automatically match that pixel dimension for the, the first option for a new document. And I'm just gonna say, okay, create that, and then paste it in, edit, paste. Boom, there's my brush, okay? How do I turn it into a brush? I go up to edit and I say define brush preset. That, that's all a brush needs to be. Just simple shapes. Even if they're red, that's fine because you can change your color of your brush. But it's best if they're solid. Then you can give it a name. I'm gonna call it FA18 Carl Paint. 
paintbrush, right? And then all of a sudden, ooh, I have this brush and I can paint with it, right? Close this, I don't even need to save it because I've already defined the brush and now the brush is in my, it's at the very bottom of my paint options. So let's figure out how to customize this brush. Notice if I just hit once, I get that brush, right? But if I do a lot, it looks like a big caterpillar with lots of legs. Doesn't look particularly believable, right? As a paint tool. So let me just delete this. It's all my speed sketch layer. And now I have to set the brush settings. And this is why I have you make your own brush because it's so important to understand brush settings. We just started with a cool shape, but that's all it is. So now you can go to window and say brush settings, or you can find it in the sidebar here. The first is shape dynamics. That's the most important one to understand. I want to control it based on pin pressure. That allows me to go thick to thin with my brush by pushing harder or lighter. It's under brush settings, so window brush settings, and then check shape dynamics. It's just like setting layer styles. And make sure your control is under pin pressure. But this is the trick. How do you make it not look like a digital tool and look more like a traditional tool? Set in a size jitter so that even though you're pushing lighter and darker, there's a natural variation in it. Right? So the size jitter, whether it's a lot, and then it gets pretty lumpy and a little bit harder to control, or whether it's a little. I usually do around 30% of a jitter. So I can really kind of, so it can look more naturalistic. Okay, next, you can set the minimum diameter. And I know this is an issue for some of you guys, where you feel like you just can't go tiny enough with your brushes. So you can set what that minimum diameter is. And if you set it to be a little bit higher, like 20%, then you'll never be able to go like dramatically smaller than the brush, right? But if you set it low, like 0%, then even when your brush is big like that, you can still do tiny little marks as well. But it is very relative based on how much pressure you put in. Okay, the next thing that I will often use is angle jitter. Because here's the problem with this brush. It's always this. And if you don't change the angle of the brush, it's always just going to look very even. So change the angle so that it changes as you're using the brush, just like twirling a regular paintbrush. Right? The next thing you might want to play with, because we're using very basic tablets, we can try to put pin pressure as a control for the jitter, but it's already controlling the size. If you have more expensive tablets, you can also set tilt and rotation, and all of those will kind of define it in different ways. But you see, when you don't have a supported device plugged in, you'll get a little warning there. So really, the only tool I have is pin, direct, pin pressure. You can play with the roundness of it. And I actually like to give a lot of roundness jitter because that will soften the brush in some places. So we're getting closer and closer to something that looks more naturalistic. So you see how the edges are now softened? That's because of that roundness jitter. <coughs> and again, I can set it to pin pressure. So we'll do a lot more of it as I press harder. Okay, the last thing you might do, this is all under, so far it's all under shape dynamics. You might try playing with texture. So texture is a new one, and this is where you can kind of poke some holes in it, like you're painting on a canvas. And you get to set how dark or bright or contrasted or deep, there we go, that texture is. So now when I paint, because I've added that texture to the brush, it's come a long way. And maybe that's a little bit too strong. It's more like charcoal. So let me take a little bit of that out. 
and let me put a depth jitter on there so it's not always the same. And again, you can put pin pressure as a setting for it. All right, I'm liking this now. So this is my little test pellet, all on my speed sketch layer. Let me erase all of that. And now I'm going to use this brush. And basically, I'm going to use this brush. Look at that, beautiful. Lots of variation. And all I'm going to do is change its size and change its opacity and do my whole painting with it. I'm not a big believer in changing brushes all the time. So first, I'm going to change the color. I have a little color selector here. I'm going to change its size up here in the tools. And I'm going to do the basic shapes, just a quick sketch of where her skull is, where her eye line is, where her jaw is. how the eyes space out. You'll notice it all fits the template where her mouth spaces out, the size and space of her lips, her hair. I might want to change that a little bit. And it, very importantly, the slope and angle of her neck and shoulders. I'm just getting used to my source. And now I can take that, take those pixels and just move them it's like doing a little tracing. Oops. Move them and transform them, enlarge them. And figure out how I want to paint her on my 11 by 14 canvas. Right? So this is using these kind of principles. I like this because as I made it bigger, it softened my marks. So now they're like soft watercolor, which is hap happens when you uh, like will gouge and blur this sharp brush that I've created. And you can also build that into brush settings, but I don't want that yet. I want to keep everything sharp because it's easy to soften. It's hard to keep things sharp. You made that line in Photoshop. I made the brush in Photoshop. So I, I just drew her uh, in this layer using my new brush, just over the top of the photo reference, and then enlarged it here. So it's like it's like transferring a tracing that I did from a photo, right? Now, what's the other advantage? Now I love that picture of Nina Simone, and I don't want to try to make her look more idealized or, you know, make her look like Tyra Banks or something. But if I wanted to do kind of more of a caricature of her. I'll do it on a duplicate. At this point, I can use my compositing skills and I could warp her. And I can say, oh, I want her to have eyes really high on her head and a really long jaw, right? And what's amazing about it, this is like some of the, the caricatures I showed you online, is that because of the way proportion works, as long as these elements are well observed from the reference, it will still look like her if I do my job right, no matter what weird shape her head is. As long as her features are arranged realistically, believably as a human, she can have a banana-shaped skull, right? And it can look like Nina Simone. She can have a light bulb-shaped skull, and it will look like Nina Simone. Now, I might decide, I just want to tweak it a little bit and just warp it, push and pull, and you're safe doing that. Because remember, we are not just copying a photograph. We are not just painting over a photograph. We are making it our own. So always ask yourself, what am I interested in painting? So that's the first step of a speed sketch, just that kind of line art reference. Okay, next, over the top of that, I'm going to do my flat color. And for that, I'm going to steal colors from different sources. So this might be where I bring in more color reference. I love this one. 